Now, when we talked about geometric properties, we assumed that there was one object in the binary image. But of course, an image can have multiple objects. Here's an image, you threshold it, you get this binary image. Before we can compute our geometric properties, we want to be able to label each object as a different object. In other words, we want to segment the binary image. It's a, a very straightforward thing to do in one way, but it's not necessarily trivial. There are a couple of nuances we have to keep in mind when we do this. So this brings us to the notion of a connected component. An object is really a connected component. It's a maximal set of connected points. And two points A and B are connected if there exists a path from A to B along which B, the binary image, the characteristic function, is constant. So bearing that in mind, let's look at our first algorithm for labeling, for segmenting a binary image. It's called region growing. So here's how it works. It's very simple. It's pure common sense. You start with, you find a unlabeled seed point. So you basically scan the image and you find the first point which is not labeled. Uh, and it happens to be a one, which means it's an object point. If you cannot find this point, you terminate. Once you find this point, you assign it a new label. If all previous points were assigned, the previous object was assigned the label three, this one's going to be a four, so it's a new label. And then you assign the same label to its neighbors that have b equal to one. And then you assign the same label to the neighbors of the neighbors with b equal to one. You keep repeating this, you're growing this object, you're growing this particular region, and you repeat this until there are no more unlabeled neighbors with b equal to one. When you get to that point, you simply go back to A, look for the next unlabeled seed point with b equal to one. So when you do this, what's gonna happen is you're gonna hit your first, first, first region, first objects, you grow that one, and then you're going to hit the next one, and you grow that one, and so on. It works fine, but you can actually do much better than this. But before we get there, let's talk about what we mean by a neighbor. We're talking about neighbors here. Well, it's not that obvious. There are two definitions possible. One is called for connectedness. So you have a pixel here, and we'll assume that that pixel is connected. Its neighbors are this one, this one, this one, and this one. That's four connectedness. But you can have a different definition, which is eight connectedness, where you include the diagonal pixels. So you have eight pixels right here, which are neighbors. It turns out that neither one is perfect. What do we mean by that? What's wrong with that? Well, for this, let's take a look at Jordan's curve theorem. So Jordan's curve theorem simply says that if you have a curve, a closed curve, that curve must divide the region up into two connected regions. This is A, fully connected A, and B. And these two are separate regions. They're not connected to each other. Well, it turns out that the four connectedness and this, the eight connectedness, both of them, if you use those definitions, they end up violating Jordan's curve theorem. So let's take a look here. Assume that this is a binary image given to you. These are ones, zeros. And we'll assume that all the zeros here are connected to each other through a larger background which is full of zeros. So this is, these are the only ones in the image. Now if you look at four connectedness, then you see that none of the ones are connected to each other because we're not looking at diagonals here. So you get four separate objects, O1, O2, O3, and O4. And you get, of course, the background here is connected to the background here through the rest of the background. But it turns out that the background inside is a separate background because it's not connected to this background. These pixels are diagonal. So what this means is that you have four disconnected objects, O1 through O4, and yet you have two disconnected backgrounds. That doesn't make sense. Now, if you go to the eight connected uh, definition, then you see that because it handles, it includes diagonal pixels as neighbors, these four ones are connected into one object. So this is taken to be a ring. And although it's taken to be a ring, a closed ring, 
Interestingly, the background inside is connected to the background on the outside. That's not possible. That again violates Jordan's curve theorem. So the way we address this is by introducing an asymmetry to the definition of a neighborhood. This is called six connectedness. And here you see that this is the pixel, and we're going to assume that these three and these three pixels are going to be its neighbors, but not these two. Or you can use this one, it doesn't really matter. So now you see that if you come back to our original image, you have ones here. By this definition, if you use this one, these two are connected, and these two are connected. So what you end up with is two line segments. And the backgrounds are all connected now, because this background is connected to this. And this, of course, through the larger image is connected to this. So this is now consistent with Jordan's curve theorem. So what have we done here? Well, by skewing this, introducing this asymmetry in the definition of a neighborhood, we are basically trying to make a square grid look like a hexagonal grid. On a hexagonal grid, things are great. You have a pixel and you have very well-defined neighbors. There's no leakage here. Unfortunately for us, image sensors don't capture images on hexagonal grids. They are square grids, so images are square grids. So this tries to make a square grid look like a hexagonal grid. That's what's going on here. So we talked about region growing before. Now let's talk about a different algorithm which is more efficient and more elegant in some ways. So imagine that you want to label this pixel A, but you're only going to use uh, previously labeled pixels, which are B, C, and D. So the reason we have assumed that these are the only ones we have at our disposal is we are going to move in this fashion. We're going to move horizontally, and when we get to the end, we come back and go to the next row. This is called a raster scanning an image. And the question is, can we somehow label all the pixels by just looking at the ones above and to the left of them? Then in that case, a single pass of the image would give you a labeling. So let's see how this is done. Here's the simple algorithm. So we assume that if we say that this pixel, A, Remember that this is the pixel A, this is B, C, and D. If A is a zero, then we don't have to worry about it. We call it a background. It doesn't matter what these are. By the way, X's mean we don't, it doesn't matter what the value is. If A is a one, and the rest are, these three are zero, we give it a new label. If A is a one and D is labeled, irrespective of what's going on with with B and C, we're going to give A the same label as D. If A is one, D is not labeled, D is background, and C is labeled, but B and D are zero, they're background, then you're going to say that label of A is equal to label of C. And similarly, if C and D are zero, but B is labeled, then we're going to say label of A is equal to label of B. And then if you have this special case where uh, A is one, B and C have been labeled, D is not, D is a background point, then you can simply, and let's say that label of C is equal to the label of B, they have the same label, then you assign that label to A as well. So label A is label B, which is equal to label C. Now, of course, there's a problem here. And the problem is if you arrive at a point and you have exactly this last situation that we discussed, however, the label of A, the label of C is not equal to the label of B, then what do you do? Well, all you need to do is essentially make note of the point that label of B is equal to label of B is equal to the label of C. Make note of that in what's called an equivalence table. And you keep going. So whenever you see this kind of sort of conflict, you just make note of the point that those two labels are equal to one another, and you create this equivalence table, 
And so once you're done with a single pass of the image, you come back and you take a second pass to resolve the equivalences, and you're done. So it's a two-pass algorithm, but very efficient.